you don't have your hand as a question. Yeah, so what do we do? I can present you. Can give a, I can give an overview. Gamification. Because I think it's a, it's a good, I mean, we haven't covered that much. So what is gamification? What is gamification? What is not? A little bit of introduction of Mark, so you're saying it's probably a good time to revisit the concepts. So. Yeah. Okay, so I've got the paper here, so I might as well just use that as my lecture notes. Aha, lecture notes. So, um, this is actually a highly cited paper, right? If you actually look at the, the citation index on this, it's very high. A lot of people cite this because of the rise of gamification. It's relatively early publication in the gamification literature. Uh, however, gamification was being used a lot before this paper came out, right? So it's, but it, there wasn't many academic articles you could cite that to tried to define it. So now, when people say, want to cite what is gamification, they find this paper and they cite this one. Right? So it's got massive number of citations because it kind of early staked out the word and gave it a definition that people were able to use easily. Right? And that's one of the things, if you're going to define something, you've got to get the right kind of word soup so that people can very easily quote it and cite it and bang, you get a citation, right? So it's actually, it's a, it's a very clever paper in that sense. Um, and you can see they, they come up with a um, gamification, just here. Gamification is the use of game design elements in non-game context, right? So basically you've got to have, if you're gonna define something, you want it to be short, right? Because when you compare that definition of something, kind of very, very short, simple definition, to the one they compare it with, which is um, ah, here, uh, Hattori and Hamari definition differs in a different way. Um, so they define, today it appears only one, um, uh, so using defining gamification from a service marketing perspective as Service packaging where a core service is enhanced by a rule-based service system that provides feedback and interaction mechanisms to the user with the aim to facilitate the support and support the user. <laughs> so, yeah, when you have a long, long phrase with lots of qualifying points, that's actually a hard thing definition to use because it's got lots of components, whereas theirs is much simpler. I'm trying to be more accurate. They're trying to be more accurate. And and this is the difference kind of between a heading and the subtitle, right? The these guys basically provide you a, a heading, right? They they provide you a short the use of game design elements in non game context. Yeah. Right? And then you don't go into all of the what are the yes. game design elements? Yes. So you don't need all that in the definition. No, in that well, in this simple to reference definition, right? So if you want to be cited a lot for something, you come up with one of these short things, and then you explain why each of those elements does constitute what, so, so all of those feedback and interactive systems that the other definition was using are in here, it's just they've lumped them as game design elements. They then don't explain that in the definition, they explain it later on, right? So it's, it's kind of almost a kind of stealthy definition by. Oh, it's a clever definition. Yeah, it's a clever de definition, and that and that's why this is very heavily cited. So, they start with this this paper. So we start um, by introduction of, of kind of how gamification is being used, and and they look at the industry origins and and um, discuss a little bit of, of serious games um, and. Uh, you see here the Jane McGonagall's um, alternative reality ga games, right? where uh, alternate reality games rather, so alternate reality games. Um, and Ian Bobus is, is quite funny, um, but he uses exploitation where to describe some of what gamification is doing. Right, so he, in, in's not quite a complete sort of um, every gamification is bad, but he said most of them are. Right, most of them are actually. Exploitation work. Yeah, the <laughs> idea that what you're actually trying to do is you're trying to fool the user into doing something they otherwise wouldn't do by playing on their 
they're by playing on interaction, right? By playing on making it, by giving them feedback, by using kind of Pavlovian stimulus response mechanisms to try and force people to do something they wouldn't consciously choose to do if you asked them specifically to do it, right? So you sneakily try and make work fun so you can make them work more, right? And you make work enjoyable so they'll do it in their own time. Right? Which is kind of exploiting them purely. Because, you know, if you said to them, look, do you want to work here? And they say no, then if you find a way around that by using stimulus response and making it fun <laughs> or addictive, then that's a problem. So so he so yeah, we so they talk through what the, the villainous rate of abuse that is gamification. <laughs> um so they go through in, in the industry background, um, the precursors and parallels, um, because with defining a term, there's usually uh, a background to when a when a particular technology comes out, or when a term gets used, or when a, a new activity occurs. Um, so, like the Apple, um, the the iPhone, right? Revolutionary. Except you know there were other screens that were about that size, and you had other touch interfaces and. And, and the iPad wasn't really the first tablet. There were other tablets and there'd been previous attempts, but they kind of didn't quite hit. Right? So there's usually a, a context around a new term or a new technology. And so here they go through and find those contexts, right? which is quite useful in understanding how a term differentiates itself from previous activity and why a term becomes popular at a specific time. Right? Um, so... We discuss the so they discuss the the um, the idea of, of one of the, the one of the backgrounds they use is that in HCI they talked about making fun interfaces right they, this is, it's not since the nineties people have wanted to have fun right I mean it's been around a long time trying to make things more enjoyable right um, I you even talk about the Olympics is making military training so the old ancient Olympics were kind of about making military training more interesting. Um, and the Model Olympics are, 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 are definitely a serious game. But, um, yeah, so how do you add fun? How do you add, make things more enjoyable, more interesting? Um, have been there for a while. And you start to get these terms playfulness, right? So um, being playful, right? having, having that kind of fun sense, pleasure um, and fun in there. Uh, and you see here... Um, space uh, you start to see the word ludic ludic design and ludic engagement and ludic activities um, homo ludens was um, one of the earlier books written by a Norwegian um, Espen Narciss um, homo ludens um, man the player um, and so the idea that, that humans play games uh, he was looking at things like chess and and bridge and card games and fancy games and board games and things. So, so he was talking about play, not just digital, but all forms of play. Um, and so ludic and ludology and um, uh, using the word ludo to refer to game things. So sometimes they talk about narratology and ludology. So studies of, of narrative versus studies of games. Um, so you start seeing those words being, being used. Um, and gamification versus ludic reimagination or ludic design uh, or yeah, applying ludic design versus gamification. Gamification, one of the other reasons it's popular is the sound of the word, right? And the associations it has with other effications, right? There's beautification and there's, um, uh, what are some of the other ones? Beautification, um, Gamification. Uh, I can't think of any other at the moment. Um, Californication. Hmm? <laughs> Californication. Californication. <laughs> 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 there is there, that is being <laughs> that has been yeah there's a TV program. Um, um, but I mean, it also has a science appeal. So you have bifurcation of things and and. Fabrication, and there's a whole bunch of sort of creation y kind of words that are scientific sounding. And so, to try and give yourself that you know, feel more 
more relevant than saying, oh yeah, we're using games. Gamification sounds much more kind of scientific, even if it's mostly marketing, um, in how it's currently being used. Okay, so they give you the background, um, so then they work towards the definition, and what they say is, okay, um, they're here, they're trying to say, we, we believe that gamification does indeed demark a distinct, previously unspecific group of phenomena. Right? So what they're saying is, we think there is this term is being applied in a useful and interesting way. Right? So, um, and to do that, they say, okay, well, can we, can we find where, where it sits? In interaction space, right, in in the space of other activities, and that it is actually something specific. Um, and so they come up with this definition. They they talk about games and playing. Um, they also talk about okay, my devices are all beeping at me. Um, they talk about the elements. Um, and here you see this this discussion on serious games. Maybe if I can make it a bit larger. Um, So they make the decision that serious games are fully fledged games for non entertainment purposes, whereas gamified applications, right, or gamification, um, merely incorporates elements of games or game atoms. Um, of course, the range between game and artifact uh, game is blurry. Is Foursquare a game or a gamified application? Do you have an answer to that? Is Foursquare a game? It's a little bit blurry because it depends on how you use it. The, the, Luckily, they actually <laughs> say that later on. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because for some people, if they get competitive and they want to play it and be the, the mayor of their town, when, but some people, they just want to get a discount at their local shop or something or want to, want to show their friends where they're at. So, so. They use it, um, so, so if you're using it as a, a social notification app, right, to say to people, oh, I'm, I'm at the coffee shop, if you're nearby, drop down for a coffee. Yeah. You don't care about the points, you yeah. don't care about mm -hmm. being near of the coffee shop, you don't care about any of that stuff, you're just using it as a social notification app. Yeah. yeah. Or just but, keep track of where you've been. Or, that would yeah. be an app, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if you're playing it with the achievements and all those mayor things and so on, that's a game yeah. to me. And you start yeah. to go places you would normally go just to make sure that you are the man. Yeah. So yes. it can definitely be a game. It could be just a straight serious game, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it could also be a gamified app if you think of it as a social notification app. Um, so yeah, there's a there is a lot of blurry lines in here. Um, I don't. How could it be a, a serious game though? The point is just to walk around and. It's not a serious game. No. You could. You could see it as a serious game. How? Because if your intent was to have people it was non-entertainment purposes. So two, for example. One is um, you place them in interesting and physically challenging places to get to, to yeah. encourage exercise. And you're being paid by advertisers to get people to their particular locations. And so you are so the game is designed to get you to go to where the advertisers want you to go. It could be used by tourist offices to make people explore their city, for example. Yeah. So, I, because Foursquare wasn't, I mean, the social notification aspect of Foursquare didn't really exist much. I mean, people were, would post on Facebook, right? Yeah. So you, could, you could post on Facebook, you could show, you could tell your location. Um, but Foursquare didn't come out with a social notification app and then add games to it later. They started from day one with it being a game, yeah. right? And so you could argue it was a serious game, and they, what they were serious about was trying to get people to um, try and get advertisers and companies to get people to visit their shops. Yes, but I don't see people using it for non-entertainment purposes. So how would I use it if it wasn't entertaining oh, for me? No, no, it's not. No, no, it's, it's entertaining for you. Yes. But me as an advertiser, I pay to shape your entertainment. Yes. So it's a serious game, but serious for you. from the advertiser's perspective, not from the player. The player gains nothing from the serious game. No. Right. So and that's a different perspective. 
Yeah. Does the player have to gain something? Maybe you get some social interaction. Yeah, you you get social interaction. They, you they might can. get some discounts. And some places, yeah, the the mayor gets the discount. A mayor gets the discount. Mm-hmm. Um, but companies can pay to have kind of be be more featured on 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 Foursquare and stuff. Right? Mm. Um, and and you have that that idea that if you advertise and offer discounts, then people will come, and Foursquare is used to do that. And, and Foursquare sells the data that you collect, that they collect about people's movements, and um, the fact that people who go to your coffee shop also go to this bookstore, or go to that, co- or go to that restaurant, and and so they're they're serious about what they're doing, right? Um, but you you as a user are just a pawn. They're not mm. making anything beneficial to the user. So that becomes is this? It does a serious game have to have non-entertainment benefits for the player? I would say so. So for you it does? Uh, at least there's a grey area. It's a grey area, area, definitely. Because, yeah. I mean, if you start having product placements in entertainment games, there would be advertising value for those who put products there, would then be a serious game just because it has an advertising component. I mean, so the, the lights are yeah. blurred. Yeah, yeah, at what point does it become more of a serious game yeah. than, than the entertainment game? Um, and, and speaking to the fact that it should be serve a purpose for the user. Now, here it has a little bit of a purpose, as you're saying, in social interaction and possibly games, mm. um, credits for going somewhere. It's like in the US, you can have all these coupons and bring them to the stores and get some discounts. So that's kind of a, and that is, that's a serious business. I mean, mm. people collect coupons in big. Exactly. So yeah. You say that. Yeah. Well, it's a little bit of. A, but I, I would think that uh, to me, I, I would think that uh, it should be serious. I mean, because business is always serious to whoever de- whoever developed the game. So that's serious for them, anyway. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so if you if you're spending fifty million dollars on a game, it is serious. You're invested <laughs> in it. It being useful and selling. Um, so, so making a game isn't a game. So it's serious. <laughs> it's a serious, right, kind of a serious business. A serious game should have. A, uh, an additional benefit to, to, the, to the player, player. Yeah. yeah. So, so we could probably make that as as a restriction on our because again, rather than being inclusive, here I'm saying what are if we can exclude some things, right? That adds more information than just kind of including stuff because um, at the moment the definitions generally include a lot of stuff, so it's more interesting trying to get rid of some of it. Yeah. Um, so, which led to one of my questions, which was, um, and they talk about it. They actually, I don't know if they talk about it here or slightly later. Um, can a game be gamified? Um, right, I think that's actually a later. Um, which elements? So yeah. So they they. So one of my questions is: Can a game be gamified? And they say no. Right? No, you can't gamify a game. And their justification for it, um, and I can't really search for anything that says that because I can't find gamification in games. Um, ah, here. So some authors um, have argued that games themselves can be gamified. Okay, so they're, they're, and they say um, a case in point being a meta game platform such as achievement systems. In principle, this might be a, a, a line um, with the definition. Uh, yeah. This might be in line with the definition presented here. The only thing that non-gaming context explicitly uh, intends to exclude is the use of game design elements as part of designing game, since that would simply be game design, not gamification. So they're saying you can't gamify a game because if you're designing a game, adding game elements to a game is just game design. It's not gamification. So that's that's what they're trying to argue here. Um, so I would agree with that. So uh, you can't gamify a single game, but you can gamify games in general. You could gamify a collection. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Um, so ha- yeah. So how close to classifying meta games or other additions of game design to existing games as something other than game design becomes hard to uphold. And this is where I disagree with them. Um, firstly, even if uh, if a formal um, a formalist in formalist game literature like meta games. Uh, also understood as fully fledged games, based on the effects and outcomes of the game, uh, not simply game design elements. Secondly, from so so they're saying that 
in literature, we can talk about meta games as being part of the game, right? So it's it's not a, a separate thing. Um, secondly, from the design perspective, given that the context of design is already that of games, it seems counterproductive to perceive design of meta games or game elements as distinct from design of those games. Now, of course, you can. My case in point here is chess, right? If I gamify chess, I'm not designing chess, right? Chess is a immutable, already designed, very well structured rule set, which I had no hand in designing. No. Right? So anything I do at a meta level above chess isn't actually part of chess, right? And no one would say, my new game is a part of chess, right? It's not. Chess is known as, a, as an atom that I don't no, have a part of. the chess players would say, this is not a new chess. Is yes, <laughs> yes, I can play chess. Your meta game around and higher up stuff, that's all just a new... That's a meta game. That's something entirely different. You're trying to gamify my experience of playing chess. Yes. Right? And I think they would be quite accurate in saying that no, this is, you're not, because you're not designing chess, the meta system isn't all part of one system. It is two very distinct systems. One's already pre existing, and I have no design influence on. The other is what I'm designing. Yes. Right? So that for me is where you can gamify a game. Right? But you do it when you're not the designer of the game. As you were saying with groups of games. Yeah, like Olympic games. The Olympic games. You can, if you're not the designer of an activity, yeah. then building a superstructure on top of a bunch of atomic things that you're not the designer of means you're doing something independent of the design of those individual yeah. activities. Or Xbox One, or you know, Play Stores and stuff. <clears throat> they're, they're all kind of gamified systems on top of games which they don't know anything about. They don't yeah. modify it. They the don't even they know. Design. Yeah. For example, in Steam, you get yeah. achievements. Steam, of, uh, exactly. How many, if you bought a game and know you have 20 games. Exactly. Now, it's the same games. with Xbox One and the other mm -hmm. systems. Yeah. Yeah, so for me, this, them here, so they missed it. You can't da gamify games. Um, I think that's a failure in their definition because. They don't think of you doing it to something that's an atomic system that's already that's already set and stable. They see it as you designing the whole system. Right? Now, of course, we're, when, when something's atomic, right? what is the, the atomic gameplay in, in say, um, Foursquare is one mm -hmm. I use. The, the gameplay, the traditional game, would be existing and breathing in a location. Right? Existing in a location is the game is the core game behavior, and everything else is meta game. Right? The achievements, the leaderboards, the points you score, the social sharing, all of that you could consider meta game on top of the core game element of existing in a location. Right? And it's not a particularly interesting core element. Um, I you could do it on top of playing chess at a location. Right? And then you see your cheer score, you cheer who you played against, you cheer your ranking, your ranking. You could metagame all of the stuff and have the activity much more complex than existing. But Foursquare kind of stripped away that and just left existing in a location as the only thing you have to kind of actively choose to do. Mm. Um, so yeah, I think, I think they, with their definition and explicitly saying non-game context limits their definition. We discussed whether that's a good idea. Right? Is it a good idea to actually say, no, we want to use something else for that situation? Well, what, what I would say, though, is that it's not a, to me, it's not a very interesting case. It is a case, and it's worth discussing from a more completeness point of view. But for reality, because when I talk about gamification, I mean, the types of, uh, of applications that they talk about gamifying would not be typically be games, and that's mm -hmm. where you, the, the discussion is, is it good to gamify or not? I don't think many cares whether it's a good idea to gamify chess. Uh, well, it. But, but gamifying, uh, the shopping experience, the use of email, traveling, game, yeah. I mean, these would be the, the more the interesting discussions, I feel, but it's... Well, yeah, and, and so I mean, whether it, it's an interesting problem or interesting. In here, it's, it's uh, I suppose to some extent whether you can use the same techniques, right? And what techniques yes. make sense to use. Yep. Um, 
So Foursquare, I think you can think of Foursquare as a gamification of, of being in locations, right? Of, of, of like social sharing. Um, and the stuff they do in the Xbox and mm. Steam, you can say, like, we can take those elements and we can try and apply them to other areas. But I think you do have that issue of, well, there are more interesting ethical issues or social issues around when you gamify something, what additional effects do you have? Mm. Yeah. Right, yes, you've got your innovation group. Um, okay, so we have, um, so they go through, they, they discuss uh, where games sit, and they give this, um, they give a table of, of um, levels of game design elements. Right? So they, they talk about, inter they, they, they go from kind of really small, kind of low level game elements to conceptual large elements, right? So from fine detail to large ideas. Um, and so here, the example they did, that right from you know, giving badges and having a leaderboard as being kind of these low level elements um, through to the idea that you should have play testing and you should have design which focuses on the playing experience. Um, and um, yeah, you, you value conscious game design. You actually say, well, we're, we're taking this holistic approach, right? thinking a game thinking approach to designing something. Right? So they try and build those levels up. Um, and this is one way of tr trying to say, can, can we structure our knowledge in an interesting way? Now, if I zoom out again. Um, they also put, where's the, there's the Wii U table on playfulness in games. There we are. Um, So they have this. They, they provide this table here, where they talk about um, gaming and playing, and whole and part. Right. So they again, when they're trying to make the definition, they're trying to stake out some space, right? Some kind of conceptual space, and saying gamif gamification, gameful design, takes up this area, and games are over there, and toys are over there. And playful design is over there, and game gamification of things is over here. Right? Um, and so they they try and do these two part axes. You'll see a lot of this kind of stuff, right? People will bring up a pair of axes and then try and play stuff, right? I mean, the this is from the management video. Yes, the whole yep. management is about this. Yes, Four dun, 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 dun. Yeah. two axes, two axes, do everything on two axes. The world is easy to deal with. Yep, you map everything to two axes, and you're done. Sorry? A political system. So yeah. 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 But does it make sense? It's all you need. <laughs> Do you think it makes like, sense? What's the thing at the bottom? Playing. Playing. Playing, playing a game. And they, <clears throat> they break it up into playing and gaming, and whole and part. Whole? Part? Part. So the idea here. What, the, what I was saying about the uh, gamification was that it was not a thorough, complete design. They just elements in that. So they were gaming mm -hmm. elements in that. Well, otherwise it would be a complete game. If yep. It was complete design, it would, and, and there was a, there were blurred lines. So, so of course yeah. these are kind of more yeah. overlapping with uh, these things here. Yeah. So basically, if you have all of the elements of a game, right? Everything in it is a game, and it's all of it is a game. Okay. Yes, but I, I found it very tautological. So if it is a game, then it has all the elements for the game, therefore it's not a gamified system. Right? Yeah. What constitutes a game? Like what are the essential elements of the game which you could define? You can't. And you can only tell if it's a game if it's a game. <laughs> right? And playful design? Could that be applied to well? So there is a separate um part, certain yeah. category of minimalistic games where they try to distill the game essence to the minimum amount of elements and no one knows what that is. It's kind of an ongoing theme. Yeah. But I, I, uh, I think we were, uh, we were asking for these kind of, uh, of uh, discussions and models in the previous paper that we had uh, mm. last time. And I, and I, I like that, and I disagree a little bit with uh, with uh, your view there because I think it is useful. As all models, it has its restrictions, so it needs to be used for the right purpose. I think what they're trying to do here is they already have discussed the uh, 
play versus yep. game. Yep. And they'll be discussing the complete games versus game mitigation. And then try to cr create a simple picture mm -hmm. illustrating these things. And they're not saying that, okay, it's clearly defined, these are accurately defined, but it, it, it helps uh, uh, the, the user a little bit in organizing what is everything. And then, of course, there, there's there's big overlap in the middle here that makes it hard to say is, is in that square or that square. But I think to to kind of, they have talked about these concepts and trying to say, okay, now we have four course categories of, of things here that in, in our terminology would be fit in here. I think it's a, it's a good way to visualize and create a, a simple model, and as, as all models, it has its limitations and weaknesses, and it can't express everything. But I think in terms of dealing with what they have been discussing, I think it's, it, it's quite a good one. And so it, you, even though it's not very innovative right here, because it, you see it all the time. I mean, they have two axes, and they just put up four squares. Of them. So yeah, and you can think of this. Uh, here, if you're looking at a game like football, right? soccer, it has, has some posts and it has a, a ball, right? So it has very few... And some rules. And some rules, right? So it has rules it and some, 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 some parts, right? So it's a game. And football is a full game with parts. There are parts that are the rules, there are parts that are equipment. And if you got rid of some of the, the gaming aspects of it, so got rid of some of the rules, you end up with playful elements, which are toys, right? So a ball, a soccer ball, is a toy, right? So it can sit here. When you add the game rules and the game aspects to it, the competition and the play, it moves up in this direction, right? So you take those away, it moves down in that direction. If you take away the parts, this is what I find, as you break it into parts, this is where playful design I find a bit odd, is that if you take all of the, the toy if you take out the parts of the toy, I don't know if I agree with playful design is what sits there, right? Because if you take all the aspects of um, of a football game, right? There, are, admittedly, there are only a couple of parts, like the the ball, the players, and the posts. If you move from the whole to just one of them, the soccer ball, the ball itself is still a toy, even by itself. Exactly, right? and it's not divisible into its parts. It is a ball. It's, and the goalposts, right? They're not even very playful, right? When you take them away from their context, there's not, I mean, maybe they're a jungle gym, right? But normally they're pretty boring, right? So it's only in combination that they become interesting, right? So I'm not sure if playful design is a good part down here, right? That it's, it's playful and it's in parts. I think, what, yeah. yeah, so I, I, I think it might, that, that's, the, for me, the least satisfying of these areas in terms of, of its description of what's happening in that area. Because if you, take the, if you take gamification and take away the parts that are, and you, you separate out and say, well, we're adding the, just these bits of leaderboard and stuff, which are still elements of game. If you remove those, you've actually kind of got nothing left. I don't, I don't think there is playful design here at all because I can't see what's left using stuff that was part of games but isn't anymore I mean if you've got a hockey stick or a, or a tennis racket um, I, I don't see the way that's playful design well, uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not so sure about the, about the toys and the, uh, because the games aren't physical games are Activities. And I think that the whole should be play. I mean, when, some, when, when kids or someone else just play for no purpose other than they, they enjoy their time and the play design. Another point. And on the other side, they talk about artifacts that are halfway and then they, they yeah. do gamification. It's where you take these elements into some artifact. Now, if you take the, some play elements into an artifact, what would that be? Exactly. So that, that yeah. was my point. So my point is that they're mixing the timeless entities with time-based interactions, right? Playfulness with, with objects with, play. Or game elements with actual games, right? So if I have a game and I take some elements off, it's still a game. I take some elements off, it's still a game. I take some elements off and suddenly it's, it's not a game anymore, right? It's just a football ball. I mean, I think if you have 
uh, in this case, if you have some game elements and you put them together into a game, that's one thing. Now, if you take something existing yeah. and take game elements put on the top of that, then that's the game tool design, that's mm -hmm. the gamification. Now, so if you have some play, kids are coloring. Now, if you have that kids can enjoy coloring and they put that into some other app, then you can say it's a playful design because it's a it's a it's an app that allows them to color. It's not a game, but they can color and they can enjoy themselves inside an app that hasn't ha it's not designed. But then it would a be toy. a toy. Ah, no, ah, no, 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 so, no. It so they, yeah, it so. Have to be. I mean, it's so to make to let's say to make uh, a newspaper in uh, reading enjoyable for kids, they can be given color sticks and they can make moustaches on the pictures and, and they can play on top of and, and also read. So that would be not be a, a, a game because there's a rule, but it would be to add some play behavior on top of an other a type of app. So this should not, so in, in that thing, that, that word is wrong. That word is wrong. That, that should be that, play, that's right? What I think. So you have it games play. and play yeah. and you have gamification and playful <laughs> design. That's huh? what I think. So yeah, so yeah. and then toys was, are on. Then you use remove the the because toys are artifacts. Yeah, right? yeah and you probably the wrong. And the problem here is when you're mixing artifacts yeah, and, sure. and and as Marish is saying, sort of time based interactions with artifacts, these are two very different things. Yeah. Right? So if that was not if that was play, yeah. but they probably don't want to use the word play here because there it looks like they've got <laughs> gaming at the top and playing at the bottom, and they've got games there and play here. <laughs> yeah, play Gary, but, but that's what yeah. they're trying to do. <laughs> yeah, basically, that finding good names for the categories is it, easy. It, it's okay. I mean, you could say games are here yeah. and standard play are play. You know, playing and the whole of play is play. So it should really be play, not <laughs> toys, because toys is what you play with, you know, exactly. yeah. play itself. Mm. Uh -huh. So I think, okay. yeah. I think so, but you can't really have those discussions until you do this to kind of diagram, right? And yeah. that's what we were missing from last week. What we're missing from last week, we didn't sculpt this space in an interesting way that we could then have these discussions because they just used the words. And each of us had a different mental model and a different version of that. And because we couldn't compare those because we didn't have something tangible to compare, we couldn't have that discussion mm. about whether the categories made sense and they relate to each other and how things move around the categories. So yeah, that's one of the advantages of doing this kind of diagramming. Yeah, even if it isn't perfect. Even if you get it wrong. Or even if it's wrong, yeah. It creates the ability to discuss the the relationships. Right? Because you visualize the relationships. And here again, visualizing where it sits in relation to use of games and uh, and to ludification of culture. Right? So here they talk about Everything's becoming more playful, right? so they um, yeah, they talk about playful interactions, playful design, serious toys, um, and fully fl using fully fledged game versus game elements. So, so they kind of try and draw a different distinction here, uh, and then kind of use a separate axis up the top. Okay, so if we have a quick quick look at the questions that I had put in. Or that well, I put one of them. Um, I, the, the bottom one I already answered because I was interested in myself. So can games be gamified? And mm -hmm. yes or no, and maybe it's not an interesting question. <laughs> Which I think no, is a, a I, good I think the game, a single game, it's kind of well, as um, as Runa said. But games, it's a different story. Yeah. Okay. Um, what is the difference between the levels of games? So we discussed very, very fine individual badges through to game concepts. And sometimes I talk about sort of the game mechanics versus the concepts of um, agency and experimentation. And those are that kind of different level of thinking. Um, and a lot of people get stuck at the low level, right? Most gamification stuff you'll see is badges and levels and that's it. That's what they think gamification is. They go no further than that. They're the simple ones, we'll just add points to our system, it'll be fine. Um, so, what is the difference between gamification and playfulness? Gamification and playfulness. It's on the paper. What do you guys think? <laughs> I 
tweeting it? Well, from how I understood it, they are connected, but playfulness is more of a kind of a, an experience, a state of mind that gamification seeks to create, in a way. Uh, well, I don't think uh, well playfulness doesn't necessarily have to be connected to gamification. Mm. It uh, well, that's kind of how I. Oh, forty-five. No, we should go. Hi, Jack. Yep. 